and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And our guest is Alvian Lyons. She's our Healthy Families Consultant, comes back to help us from time to time with our relationships. Last time we talked about our relationships with our partner. This time we're gonna talk about loving our children. Welcome back, Alvian. Thanks, Robin. Good to have you. I always love it. Now, loving our kids seems to come naturally. We don't need help, right? That's what people <laughs> like to tell themselves. <laughs> Until you interview children and they tell you, I wish my parents would love me the way I want to be loved. So oh. they're, and they don't always say it in that exact language, but in a lot of ways, they communicate to us that there are certain things that they wish they had in relationships with their parents. Never a question whether or not their parents love them or whether or not they love their parents, but just ways to increase the effectiveness of the relationship that exists, which which I think in a lot of ways would maximize our impact in our mm. children's lives. So showing things in a different way and absolutely maybe some tips on how to how to be work. able to do that more efficiently. <sighs> okay. So you know we like to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. So we're going to just do four things in particular today that sometimes are not always easy for us as parents because we have our own agenda. You know, we have the ways in which we imagined our kids' lives being and what their personalities were going to be like and how that would all show up. But our kids want to be able to be themselves as they unfold into their fullness and we've got to be able to do our our job in a way that leaves room for that. So the four things we're going to talk about are just a simple A, B, C, and D when it comes to loving our kids more effectively. We just came off of Valentine's Day last week, mm -hmm. so we've worked on loving our partners. Now let's talk about how we love our kids. Okay. The first thing is A, acceptance. Big thing for kids big thing. Now I'm not saying that you approve of everything that they do because we all know that if you leave kids to their own vices, they'll get into all kinds of stuff. Right. But we're really talking about the acceptance of who they are in their personhood. Not about every one of the single or individual decisions, but that he as your son may never be into sports. He may love the arts and that doesn't make him any less a little boy or a teenager for that matter. She may never be into the girly stuff. She may always want to be kicking a soccer ball around and that doesn't make her any less a girl. Or she may be the princess and you may be going, no honey, I want Not you to worry that. about your career. Exactly. <laughs> be a lawyer. But there's always something and that's exactly the point. Yeah. We have an imagination and every time a child is born, we develop a whole script for what they're going to be like. And sometimes oh. it's reliving our own lives. It's true and improving. <laughs> Yes. What we didn't yes, get right, exactly. we, what we, we give it to them. Mm -hmm. And we want them to fill the, fulfill those dreams. But that's not what they're here for. Right. They're here for their own purpose. We are all meant to be unique. I heard a quote once that said, if any two of us are the same, one of us is unnecessary. <laughs> and I love that because our kids are not meant to be a carbon copy of us. Even if they like the things that we like, are good at the things that we're good at, that's still supposed to come through their unique personalities. Right. And we can't make them into us in the process of helping them to become who they're meant to be. So acceptance is the first thing that we have to do. Let them be who they are. It's really okay. The fact that they are not just like us, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need balance. Yeah. We need yeah. balance. Mm -hmm. And we grow as a result of those things. So A is acceptance. Okay. Then B. Belief. It's so important to our kids that we believe in them. A lot of times while we're trying to guide them, we forget to let them know that we believe in their ability. When we're correcting, we tend to tell our kids everything that's going to happen if they don't do this. <laughs> you know, you're going to fall off the planet if you don't get an education. You're going to fail out of school if you don't sit down for an hour and do your homework. We tell them all kinds of things about what could happen. And a lot of times it's the sky is falling orientation to things. And kids begin to question whether or not we have faith in their ability to make decisions and to do well. It's important that as parents, in the way that we love, that includes believing in them. That even though you may not have done this quite the way that you probably should have, and we could be right, we need to make sure we communicate in our language that, you know what, I'm going to tell you what should happen. I'm going to trust you to make it happen. And I believe that you have it in you to make it happen well. If we give our kids more of that, it adds to their confidence 
And the one thing that is absolutely true that the research bears out is that confidence, confident kids do better socially, emotionally, and academically. Mm -hmm. And that comes from parents who believe in them, people in their lives that tell them that they're going to be something, you can do this, I have a total faith in this, I can't wait to see you on the front page of the newspaper, or running your own company, on your own television show, standing up on that stage, whatever it is, it's what we're saying to them that has a lot to do with how they feel about themselves. So our B is believe. We've got to believe in our kids. Then C, consistency. We've gotta be consistent about the things that we're saying, mm -hmm. the messages that we're putting out there. If you're gonna guide somebody, you can't tell them to go left and then go right at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and it happens a lot because we're seeing one thing, then we think we notice something else and we're quickly adjusting to that and we, we're parenting on the fly in lots of ways, but we still have to make sure the principles of what it is we're talking about, those things are consistent. If we say that here are our core values, here are the things that we expect of you. In my family, for instance, many people who've heard me speak in lots of different seminars and conferences hear me say that for us, it's simply God, family, and education. That's what it is in our household. We n I'm never telling somebody else what it needs to be in their household, but having it very clear for your kids so they know exactly what you expect from them to develop themselves spiritually, to make sure that they understand that you're part of a family unit. You represent something bigger than yourself when you step out of this house. So do understand that that should be reflected well. We are part of you every time you go somewhere, every decision that you make. So don't make decisions that are going to in any way embarrass the family because you are part of this team. You are our representation. And then making sure that you understand that education is the gateway to opportunity. Don't take your education lightly. This is how you make sure that you level the playing field by taking your school and your academics seriously. Those are our values, but we're consistent about those things. So any kid who walks into our house can say that, hey, if you're walking in the lion's household, you're gonna know these three things. Well, that has to be true consistently for us as parents as a whole. Whatever your values are, make sure your kids know what those are and that we're consistent in the ways that we talk about them, the expectations we set up where those are concerned, and how we display those things in terms of what we model. Because the other thing is, you can't say one thing and do something very different. And as adults, we do that very often. We're talking about the fact that these things are important, but then we're not living the fact that those things are important. So we can't send, send dual messages. If I walk in the house and I plop down in front of the television and that's what I'm doing for the rest of the evening, it's pretty hard to convince your kids that education is important when all they see you do is sit in front of the television. But if they see you reading, if they engage in conversations where we're talking about current events, what's happening in the world, what's going on in terms of you know, changes in technology, how that's affecting us, applying it to everyday worlds. I remember when I couldn't stick something in the microwave and press two buttons and all of a sudden it was ready. You know, Just even those simple conversations, those things influence the way the kids think critically and communicate and orient to information and knowledge. So if you say something's important, be consistent about showing that it's important through your modeling. And you're talking about consistency then in that big C, that values, these are the core things, not consistently that every day at exactly right. eight you do this. And exactly. every day, you know, it's there you can have some fluidity. It's but it's the big picture. Absolutely. Always get back to the big picture. Absolutely, because ultimately it's the big picture that's going to matter. The little details, they're good. every kid is gonna be different. That formula you used for the firstborn is not gonna work <laughs> for the third. You know, right, just, right. Everything is going to change, and we have to be okay with that. But if our principles, our core values are the same, then the unique way in which that is displayed with each child may be different because we have to parent per child but it's not differences in values, that each child we've given a different set of values, mm -hmm. but the overarching principles of who we are and what this family is about is consistent, that's the thread that runs through every child that comes out of this household. And it's even true for the friends, because if you're that consistent, you'll find that even the friends know what's expected when you're in this household. Right, right. And, those, and that's so valuable. 
And it's not in terms of you're re-raising anybody else's kids or trying to influence anything else, but it's to say that it does make a difference in the kinds of associations that your kids have right. and the kinds of influences because people know what to expect when it comes to the McCormick children. Right, we eat at the dinner table, we all have a conversation, doesn't matter if it's just my kids or if there's 10 other kids Absolutely. around that table. The phones are somewhere else and we're talking to each other. Absolutely, and it basic. doesn't matter what the principle is, right, but it's right. that you're living those principles in such a way that if I spend any time with you, I, I know already that here are the things that Robin McCormick values. I can already tell because you're consistent in the way that you model those things. That has to be true in our households also. Okay. So it is the big C in terms of consistency. And then finally D, we have to do our own work. Whatever we don't finish in ourselves as adults, we often hand it to our kids. And that's unfair. Our kids are not here to finish our unfinished projects. That's not what they were made for. So give me an example, what do you mean? For instance, if I never got an education and I always believed that it was important that I should have been Dr. So-and-so, and for some reason I feel inadequate about the fact that I didn't do that, now I'm pushing my son that he has to get his PhD. But that's not what he has a passion for, not what he's interested in. He has an incredible aptitude when it comes to playing the cello, or he's fantastic in the band. He wants to major in those things. But because we have our own stuff that we didn't finish, we're looking for our kids to do that work for us. Those are the kinds of things we have to be careful about. Same thing can be true are our issues, are our fears, making those our kids' fears. The fear that the relationship, our relationship didn't work out in terms of marriage, hypothetically speaking. So now we're telling our kids, you know, you've got to be careful who you pick. Relationships don't always work out. You've got to know everything about the family before you start dating, da da da, da because it's our stuff that we didn't work through and we're making it our kids' stuff and they're totally separate. Their experiences are not gonna be our experiences. Can we share the wisdom right, that's what of our experiences? Say. So you have to figure out what that sure. line is. Yeah. Right, it's sure you can share the wisdom, but there's a difference between sharing the wisdom and sharing the fear. Mm -hmm. The wisdom says, these are my experiences, but when you make your decisions, be aware of these things, but do what's right for you. The fear says, don't do this, don't do that, this is gonna happen, I t I'm promising you. That's when we're perpetuating fear, and we don't wanna do that. So there's a difference between how we display what we do. It's not what it is, it's how we share it that makes a world of a difference for our kids. Okay, so this is really, it's loving your kids, but it's also, you know, building a relationship with them that is Absolutely. fair and one-to-one and, -one and, and get some of the garbage out of the way, right? Very much so, because love is a very individual thing. It's seeing you for who you are, accepting you for your fullness, and developing the kind of relationship that we become our best selves together. And as parents, our focus is making sure that our kids get a chance to be their best selves. And the way that we build those relationships make a world of a difference. Now, you know I have to give a plug where that's concerned. Okay. Building better relationships with healthy families has great principles in teaching us how to do those things more effectively. You know, creating that bridge between what it is we want to accomplish and what we want to share with our kids and then how to do it most effectively. Because a lot of times we have great ideas, we have great intentions, but we don't always know how to go about it. So Healthy Families is a fantastic asset for any parent with children of any age that really can be useful in making it easier for you by giving you the tools to build those relationships in ways that we get more of what it is that we need and the richness of our, of our experience together as parent and child. Well, and it also, it helps you put things into practice so mm -hmm. that if you're going to a class and maybe it lasts six weeks, and I know a lot of times in their classes they have child care, Absolutely. you know, they'll feed you, a lot of things, but it gives you that time to really work on it. Like it's you and true. I might kick around these ideas and you go, great, I'm going to do this. And then maybe it falls off a little mm -hmm. bit. But if you engage in those classes and, and spend that time practicing and then coming back and practicing, then it becomes really a habit. It becomes That's your lifestyle. Absolutely true. What we do and what we rehearse, what we practice, all of those things do change the way that we operate because they become part of our default zones. 
when it's officially in me, it's easier to retrieve it when I need it. Mm -hmm. But if I only have it at head knowledge and really not at heart knowledge, and heart knowledge is once we've really experienced the thing, it is much harder to be able to retrieve it when I need it. So by getting involved in those kinds of things, it becomes stuff that you already know how to do. Right. And you know where to go to when you're going through those experiences. It is, it's a wealth of knowledge. And I just wish everybody would participate. <laughs> okay, so today what we've learned is we can be more effective in loving mm -hmm. our children by mm -hmm. following your ABCDs. Absolutely. All Acceptance, right. belief, consistency, and do your, home, your own work. Do your own work. Don't mm -hmm. put that on your kids. No baggage. No baggage. <laughs> They're going to have their own. Let's not hand them ours. Okay, well, thank you very much, Abby, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this. Thanks, Thanks. Robin. And I hope you found some things that you can try too. And remember to think of that loving more effectively and working with them, building that relationship, accepting them for who they are. Thanks for watching.